Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your online concierge email for inquiring about the price of this or any Watchbox watch. For pricing and sales questions, reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing the stainless steel 40.2 millimeter Grand Seiko Spring Drive GMT SBGE 227 from the Elegance Collection, and therefore historically inspired. This is a spring drive GMT that features a gorgeous set of proportions at 40.2 millimeters in diameter, 14.5 millimeters thick, 48.3 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, a vintage 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters circumference, and it wears well. It actually sits lower than you'd expect for a watch that's over 14 millimeters thick, and it's short across the wrist, so I could recommend this watch for wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. You see it relative to my cuff, move away a little bit, get a better sense of it in proportion to my wrist and you can see down the barrel it's nowhere near the edge of my wrist taking a quick look at the strap for some reason grand seiko straps always feel buttery smooth and broken in even when they're brand new as this strap is we have a large rectangular scale alligator leather in semi-gloss black with a folded edge there is some bolstering to give it some thickness and body super smooth and supple calfskin on the bottom you can see it's a brand new grand seiko factory strap absolutely no crimping and no gouging Taking a quick look at the opposite side, you can see there is deployant clasp because this is part of the elegance collection. We have this lovely vintage Grand Seiko logo on a chiseled background. The clasp itself is a twin trigger release single fold and high polish. Uh, because of the twin triggers, it can't pop open accidentally. And you can see one of the strap minder loops is actually made of steel, which I like. The case recalls the original 1960 Grand Seiko 3180, as it's popularly known. So we have these spare tapered lugs satinated on their top, beveled on their flank, and then polished on their sides. Uh, they're broken out from the case band, so this is not a blended lug Calatrava. The case band is beautifully polished. This uses the Grand Seiko tin plate polishing method that they call Zaratsu polish. It's done on a European-made Zalitz machine, but Grand Seiko has really made this technique its own in the modern era. The case flank is mirror-finished, optically flawless, and executed by hand by artisans who hold the surface to be milled directly against a spinning tin plate. This takes about three years to master, so it's a real craft art, and it's no exaggeration to say that this watch, which is reasonably priced, is also handmade. Now we have a vertical section of the bezel which is satinated and then a shallow conical portion which is polished. Grand Seiko logo on the crown. The crown I should mention is pushed down though the watch is 100 meters water resistant. We have a box section sapphire designed to look like a vintage plexiglass and then we have a lovely almost bronze colored sunburst dial base. As you can see, we have a 24 hour hand and a 12 hour hand, two independently settable time zones. The spring drive hand glides smoothly. There are no starts, no stops. There is no lever escapement. And this watch, which combines quartz and mechanical timekeeping features, is designed as a lifetime movement that can keep time to 15 seconds per month. Remember, a COSC Swiss chronometer is minus four plus six for 24 hours. This is far beyond that. We have a power reserve indicator. It's automatic winding. The power reserve is 72 hours. We have the ability to independently set that local hour hand. Nothing is changing. The watch is still ticking. 24 hour hand not touched. Seconds hand, minutes hand not touched. Now I can jump the date forward or backwards depending on which direction I'm traveling. Pull the crown out all the way. You also have hacking or stop seconds. Now you can see that the hands are like the indices beautifully faceted. So they're satinated on their top and then mirror polished on their edge. And the same is true of each index. And Grand Seiko has artisans who just create these indices, these hands, these logos, these frames for the dates. They make these things all day long on diamond tipped micrometric milling tools. So this dial is very much handcrafted to the same extent that the case is. This is a remarkably handmade watch from a mainstream brand. Now on the reverse side, you can see caliber 9R66, 30 joules, automatic winding, three-day power reserve, spring drive, which means that there are no batteries, no capacitors, and no motors in here. The spring drive comes from the mainspring barrel. A drivetrain turns this unidirectional governing wheel. As it spins through a magnetic field, it creates an induced electrical current that wakes up the quartz oscillator. The quartz oscillator then uses that generated magnetic field to break the wheel, slowing it down so that the watch will keep outstanding time. It can slow or speed the wheel. What the quartz 
Crystal cannot do is drive the hands. Those are driven entirely by mechanical means, kinetic energy derived from spring energy, hence the term spring drive. These are watchmaker-built watches, watchmaker-serviced watches, and the movements, far from disposable consumer electronics, are built for life, just as the watch is built for life. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.